Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. When we picture an African elephant or maybe even a giraffe, whether it be thanks to movies or books, we can usually picture where those animals are found, what the ecosystem is like, what type of plants are around, what's the weather doing. And this ecosystem where African elephants and giraffes like to live is called the savanna. And that's exactly what we're gonna be learning about today, so let's jump in. Savannas are a very interesting type of ecosystem. And when we talk about an ecosystem, we're talking about an area, it could be land, it could be water, but we're talking about the living and the non-living things that are found there and how all of those things interact. So when we're talking about a savanna, sometimes we describe a savanna being a combination of a grassland and a woodland. Grassland meaning there's lots of grasses around, Woodland meaning there are woody plants like trees and shrubs, but usually on a savanna, the trees are scattered. They're kind of separated all around the landscape. So we say that it's an open canopy. The treetops are not touching and this allows lots of sun to reach down to the grasses. Another very important characteristic about a savanna is that the rains are seasonal. Savannas usually have a wet season and a dry season. In the wet season, there are really big storms. It rains frequently. Sometimes the entire savanna can get flooded, which is actually great for some of the plants and animals. But then during the dry season, they see months with very little rainfall. And this makes it really challenging for plants and animals to survive. This is one of the reasons we don't see trees covering the landscape because there's not enough water for most trees to grow big and strong. During the dry season, when a lot of the grasses kind of start to dry out, there are often fires. And normally when we picture fires in an ecosystem, that's not always a good thing. But in the savanna, it can be really important because when these fires start and they burn a lot of those grasses, those grasses turn into ash and fall down to the soil, which actually adds nutrients back into the soil. So during the rainy season when the plants start to grow again, they have all sorts of new nutrients in the soil that allows them to grow big and strong. The bigger trees are usually resistant to the fire. It doesn't affect them. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but any new trees, any young trees that are just starting to grow, the fires are typically gonna wipe them out. And that's another reason why we don't see trees covering the savanna. Savannas are often found right on the edge of other types of ecosystems. So if we think of the African savanna, that's kind of a transitional area from the Sahara Desert into more of a cooler, rainier climate. So sometimes we call them transitional ecosystems. And while we do often picture the African savanna, savannas are found on other continents as well. Even Australia and South America have savannas. Of course, there are no giraffes on their savannas, but it is still the same type of ecosystem. All right, let's discuss some of the challenges that plants and animals face when they live in a savanna. One of the biggest challenges is that dry season, those long periods of drought where there's not a lot of water around. Plants and animals have to be able to get their water in creative ways, and once they've got it, they have to be able to keep it and store it. And one of the best examples of this is the baobab tree. Baobab trees are known for having ginormous trunks that they can use to store lots of water. And these baobab trees are fire resistant as well. So during the dry season when those fires start to burn, those trees are pretty good at not being affected by the fires burning down around their bases. Baobab trees also lose their leaves in the dry season. Now. There are lots of plants that do this, and this is usually a way that plants are able to reduce the amount of water they lose through transpiration. Transpiration is the process of water escaping from plants through teeny tiny little holes on their leaves and stems. So for plants that live in dry areas, they wanna either have really tiny leaves or they wanna only have their leaves during part of the year when rain is more available. So the baobab tree 
stores water in that huge trunk and then during the dry season they actually drop their leaves and that way they lose less water through transpiration. Acacia trees are another fantastic example of a well-adapted plant of the savanna. Now this is kind of the iconic plant of the African savanna if you ask me. Acacia trees are known for being a very important food source for many animals, however they are very well adapted to the dry season. Not only do they have really wide roots that they can use to absorb as much water as they can when it does rain, they also have a really deep tap root. And now that can reach way down into the groundwater and pull up water that maybe other plants are not able to reach. Acacia trees also have teeny tiny little leaves, so again, this is helping reduce the amount of water that escapes, but those leaves are also covered in a bit of a waxy coating. And now that waxy coating has two purposes. It traps in moisture, that waxy coating prevents water from escaping, but it also tastes really bad. And so another big threat that plants in any ecosystem usually have to face is herbivores. And if your leaves taste really bad, most animals are not gonna wanna eat you. Acacia trees also have spines on their branches, little thorns that make it harder for herbivores to eat them. However, the coolest thing that the acacia tree can do to avoid herbivores is it actually creates a chemical that makes its leaves taste even worse and become actually a little bit poisonous once they sense that an herbivore has started to feed on them. And then they can release a chemical signal into the air to warn the other acacia trees that there are predators in the area. So acacia trees are not only masters at surviving in the dry season, they're also amazing at avoiding herbivores, but we can't talk about the plants of the savanna without talking about the grasses as well. In pictures, you might notice that sometimes the grasses are really lush and green. This is during the rainy season when they have lots of water available. But during the dry season, their blades of grass actually turn brown. They look like dead grass, but they are not dead. They are dormant, which is basically our way of saying that they went to a plant version of sleeping. During this time, they're using less energy, they're not really growing, and they're trapping water inside the grass itself. So this helps them avoid using too much energy and avoid using water. Of course, plants are not the only ones who have to be able to survive in the dry season. Animals struggle with this as well. So some animals, like a meerkat, has actually adapted to get all of the moisture they need from their food. From juicy insects and arachnids like spiders and scorpions, they're able to pull all the moisture that they need out of their food. That way, if there's no drinking water available, it's not that big of a problem. Other animals like large mammals and of course birds will migrate to follow the rain. So when we talk about migration, we're talking about an animal moving from one place to another place usually based on the season. So for animals on the savanna, they migrate to follow the rains where they can reach fresh food and fresh drinking water. Some animals avoid the dry season altogether by going into hibernation or brumation, which is like the reptile and amphibian version of hibernation. So during the dry season, when there's not food or water available, they'll go underground where they're nice and safe, they'll reduce the amount of energy that they need to survive, and they'll just kind of hang out until the rains come back. So plants and animals, like they do in every ecosystem, have had to adapt to survive the challenges that the savanna presents them. So when we picture the savanna, when we picture our elephants and giraffes, now we can have a little bit more of an appreciation for the challenges that those animals have been able to overcome. All right, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today while we learned all about savanna ecosystems. If you guys want more lessons like this and quizzes and videos all about the savanna, be sure to check out our Educating Adventures website and we will see you guys next time.